there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another edition of Doom Mod Madness. This time around, we are checking out a mod by the name of Impy Vendetta. This puts you in the shoes of a, wait for it, vengeful imp. And your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to claw, fireball, and by any means necessary, make your way through UAC occupied territory, back to the more friendly demonic climes of hell, where you can once again share a good old fashioned skull goblet full of blood with the lads. I made that last part up, but hey, it fits. In any case, one of the first things you'll discover about MP Vendetta is the fact that the UAC here is in absolutely no mood to pull the punches. There's an imp in the base, they are going to fuck it up as quick as possible. And this means that you are going to have to play smart. I mean, sure, you've got access to a fireball attack, but at this point in the mod, it is not all that spectacular. And quite frankly, if you're dealing with anything more than three marines in a room, chances are you're going to be eating dirt relatively quick. So, what then do you do? You try and isolate enemies, you try and take them down one-on-one, -on -one. you try and lead them around corners where they're a little bit more manageable, or even better, draw them into blasting range of a barrel that you can handily detonate. You may also note that there's a smorgasbord of colors when it comes to the UAC Marines here, but as far as I can tell, that doesn't really factor in all that much to how tricksy they may or may not be to put down. The only real thing you need to pay attention to is to the weapon that they're wielding in hand, or conversely, the weapon that they're not wielding in hand. Because if that's the case, it turns out the Marine you're trying to fight is all hopped up on Berserker Juice and is going to punch clean through your face. Pro tip, you should avoid that. I think it's safe to say that this opening level, along with a small chunk of the second, are full of quite possibly the most difficult experiences in all of Impy Vendetta. You are at your weakest, the enemy is plentiful, and it is really all about positioning and evasion. It honestly makes for quite the tense experience, one that admirably ups the ante during the course of this opening level, and I honestly don't think I've ever felt quite as intimidated at the sight of a small marine striding purposefully in my general direction as I have during the course of this mod. So how about that second level? As I alluded to earlier, it is no spring picnic, that's for sure. This box warehouse providing ample opportunity for blind corners and ambushes, and in some cases, very swift and quite unfair feeling deaths. It's quite frankly a situation that you may have to reload a few times before you get all of the positioning down pat, but once you do, you'll learn that barrels are an imp's best friend. Not only can you use them to take out unruly marines hiding around corners, but you can also acquire proximity barrels that helpfully detonate when an enemy walks close enough. Even with such assistance, I'd still regard this as an utter pain in the ass of a section, but mercifully, once you do clear it out, you do finally acquire an upgrade. Granted, as far as upgrades go, it's what I'd describe as incremental. The biggest difference you'll probably see visually is the projectile color is a little bit more of a deeper red, and it does in fact deal a bit more of a heftier punch on contact with enemies. The rate of fire, as far as I can tell, remains unchanged, and when it comes down to brass tacks, you're still going to have to play relatively coy when it comes to positioning and multiple enemies in a room. If you're understandably a little underwhelmed by that, fear not. You'll soon acquire a power-up that allows you to turn into a lost soul. Yep, you heard me right. This allows you to fly with impunity, and its primary fire allows you to aggressively headbutt enemies to death. It's, quite frankly, a delightfully unexpected addition, one that, as you can plainly see, allows you to get a little skew-whiffy when it comes to your orientation, but it doesn't really take too much effort to write yourself. If anything, this reminded me ever so slightly of flying about in Descent. Just gave me all sorts of ideas of a spin-off you could do with a lot of soul, but hey, that could be something for another time. The cost of all of my gleeful Lossal headbutting unfortunately came back to haunt me in the following level because, unbeknownst to me at the time, running over a weapon while in Lossal form doesn't mean you pick it up. It just means that that weapon disappears. I mean, where would the Lossal put it? It, it? it doesn't have any arms. It's a disembodied flaming skull head. But in any case, it just translated to this opening section, ending up a little tougher to deal with than probably intended. Not to mention the mild depression from knowing that you could have been rocking out with two Mancubus flame arms instead of just one. On that front, I feel like these cannons could have done with being a little bit chunkier. I mean, when you put a Mancubus and its cannons next to an imp, there's a bit of a size discrepancy there. Just saying. 
This level also includes a trudge through a gloopy, blood-laden labyrinth, the reward for which is a skull key and also a demonic upgrade. This one feels much more substantial in comparison to the preceding one, even if it just simply builds on top of it by giving you a much faster fire rate. It certainly feels better, that's for sure. It's just nice being able to put enemies down in a reasonable rate of time. To compensate for this increase in combat effectiveness, the mod does start throwing more advanced marine types at you. For example, you've got plasma gun marines here, you'll occasionally see rocket launcher marines, and at various points you'll have already seen jetpack marines, which prove to be especially troublesome to land a shot on, considering pretty much everything you use here is projectile based. As you'd expect, this goes the same for the Revenant Shooter, which much like the Mancubus Arms can be dual wielded provided you pick up another one, and also features two fire modes, the primary sending out a more standard Revenant rocket, whereas the secondary produces a slightly different looking projectile with a trail, which I thought at first might denote it as a homing rocket, but I don't think I've ever successfully got it to home in on enemies as of yet, so it still remains a little bit of a mystery to me, but I'm sure there's someone in the comments that will set me straight. As for the final section of this particular level, oh boy, I hope you enjoy Plasma Gun Marines, because once you hit that button, you are essentially entering yourself into a wave defense scenario. Mercifully, it gives you plenty of time to go around and hoover up supplies before they start teleporting in via the various pads here, and at first, it feels like it's not going to be that much of a big deal. The first wave is deceptively easy to deal with, but once you get to the last few, oh boy. The fourth and final level of MP Vendetta takes place in a floating fortress atop a lake of lava, and honestly, by this point in the mod, the challenge has somewhat eased off, which you'd imagine to be the case considering how thoroughly kitted out our imp is at this point. That said, it doesn't stop the UAC from trying to throw every conceivable marine type in your general direction. You've got pistol marines, shotgun marines, plasma gun marines, rocket marines, jetpack marines, and yes, even BFG marines. But mercifully, whatever BFG variant they seem to be rocking here is a fair bit nerfed from the usual BFG 9000. Basically, as long as you're avoiding that big fat orb, you should be mostly okay. Oh boy, the chain gun though. Oh my god, the noise this thing makes. Did someone forget to charge the batteries? Because this thing sounds like it's about to run dry. It does feature an interesting secondary, a quad fire, reduced rate of fire, but oh god. That noise, I, I just can't take it seriously. On the plus side though, I do have to make the concession that this is the best weapon in the game for taking down jetpack troopers. So hey, at least it's good for something. If I had to pick my least favorite part of the level, it would certainly be the slow trudge through the sea of lava towards the end. You'll note that there's a bunch of islands scattered around here, and there's no good way of spotting which one is actually going to be worthwhile to visit before you actually drop down and begin that tedious trudge, but mercifully, you will find one with a lost soul power up towards the back. As far as I can tell, this would be the only useful way of getting yourself back up to the fort, should you so choose, but also functions as a nice way of clearing up any jetpacking stragglers. If you explore a few of the other islands down here, you'll also find a rocket launcher. Not that you'll have much left to use it on by this point in the map, but admittedly it does come in handy when it comes to the final encounter of the entire mod. What can it possibly be, I hear you wonder? Well, as it happens, it's a marine with a BFG. But for some reason, this one actually works. Guess who didn't save at any point during this map? This guy! But wait, there's more! Weapons, that is. Now, I'm not the best secret hunter in the world, so a lot of this stuff completely passed me by during the course of Impy Vendetta's four levels, but, you know, I like to try and cover my bases every now and again, so I typed in give weapons just to see what I was missing, and as it happens, a whole bunch. So what exactly are we looking at here? This is the Inferno Staff. It, it's not very flamey, but boy, does it still get the killing done. Big fan of that secondary. Makes cleanup a doddle. Next up, we've got the Black Lion, which I think I remember seeing at some point during the course of Hellforged, maybe in a different capacity. I remember it being fueled by blood, but in either case, the primary projectile here is relatively slow moving, but makes up for it by homing in on various enemies and making them go splat. The secondary is more of a focused beam that seems to deal just more direct damage. Can't say it really sets my world on fire, but what does is the firestorm. Did you see what I did there? 
This is essentially the BFG slot weapon for Impy Vendetta, and yep, it's pretty friggin' effective. Primary fire functioning like a much more powerful rocket launcher with a pretty hefty explosion on the receiving end, whereas the secondary pretty much detonates everything in field of view. Pro tip, don't stand too close. You should probably already know this, but spontaneous combustion can also be hazardous for nearby bystanders. So, how do I ultimately feel about Impy Vendetta? Well, in terms of what I enjoyed, I quite enjoyed the experience of having to truly claw and scrape my way through a level. That sense of being just a regular imp is extremely palpable during the course of the first map, and it honestly took me a fair few attempts before I figured out exactly how I was going to best approach this situation. Admittedly, I also had to dial the difficulty down from Ultra Violence, but by the author's admission, Ultra Violence difficulty here is also a little bit of a piss taker so yeah i don't feel particularly bad about that slowly regaining power during the course of this mod is also a really nice feeling as well i like the touch of being able to use weapons from fellow fallen demons and again plays into that nice theme of vengeance of a vendetta however i feel like it starts to lose its way somewhat towards the final map when you're starting to pick up weapons such as the chain gun and the rocket launcher but at least it keeps a few extra spicy elements such as that transformation power up that lets you fly around and freely headbutt everything in sight as a lost soul. If anything, I would have loved to have seen a few more scenarios featuring that power-up, and on a similar bent, I do feel like four maps is just ever so slightly too short for something like this. I think this is an idea that's got legs that could be explored a heck of a lot further, and if the weapons that are languishing in secrets during the course of this are anything to go by, yeah, we could do with a few more maps. While we're at it, I would have liked to have seen more marine variety, and yeah, sure, I know there's a whole bunch here wielding different weapons and wearing different colors, but I was thinking of getting a little bit more creative than that. Maybe a marine in a tank, a marine in power armor, different configurations, different looks, different loadouts, that kind of stuff. I could really, you know, add a little bit more personality on top. That's not to imply it doesn't have any personality to begin with, I'm just saying there are places that this could go. But yeah, as a concept, as an idea, it's a good little bit of fun. One that has potential, and one that I would genuinely like to see fleshed out even further. More complex level design, more levels in general, more abilities. Just Go nuts, but yeah, it's refreshing to see a mod such as this that does something a little different with the you are the monster gimmick. Starting you off in a much less OP fashion as I've already experienced in various forms before and yeah, sometimes having you work for your victory can be just as satisfying as having the ability to make everything go splat. In any case, if you found yourself intrigued by what's on offer here in Impy Vendetta and you'd like to give it a whirl for yourself, you'll find the link, as usual, in the description below. While I'm at it, I'd like to give a great big thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so very much for supporting the channel and for helping to make content like this possible. If you're interested in lending a hand yourself, maybe you'd like to see your name in the credits, maybe you'd like to gain early access to my videos before anyone else. If that's the case, you'll find the link to my Patreon page also in the description below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments, and feel free to suggest any mods you'd like to see me cover in future editions of Doom Mod Madness. This has been Mr. Icarus, thank you very much for watching, Icarus out.